Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get instant notification of new videos as they're released. So we're going to go in and scalp this market. And very often what you'll see people do uh, when they scalp is they just go bang bang and place an order in on both sides of the market. And, and that can work uh, for sure. But what's happened over time is the markets have tended to get um, a little bit more movement in them uh, than they did a few years ago. So it's helpful if you're scalping to insert a directional bias. And what do we mean by that? What we mean is that you need to sort of say, well, you know, the price on this horse is gently drifting, the price on this horse is gradually coming in. Already in the time that we've been in this market, I'm just going to cancel these two orders. Too late, actually. Cancel that too late. Um, already while we've been in this market, you can see that there's been a little bit of backing money uh, for the second favorite here. If we have a look at his chart, um, you can see that reflected in the chart. Uh, it's not rocket science. When you um, look at the ladder, you can very often see the chart in your head. Uh, prior to putting charts into Bet Angel, I used to envisage everything in my head. Um, obviously, charts make it much easier to look at stuff. Um, but yeah, you can see that uh, represented in the chart. So if we have a look at a couple of um, the other runners as well, let me just pin that to the top. There we go. Um, you can see that there's a gentle drift on the favorite. It's gradually sort of, you know, it's coming from eight to six. It's gone all the way down to about five and it's just gradually going out. And if we look at the third, you can see that's pretty flat. And the fourth is coming in slightly. So if we were going to do a, a directional scalp, we would basically be looking to get filled at the current lay price here. And when that order is matched, pop an order in on the other side. So what we're doing there, in effect, is saying, yes, we are going to scalp this market, but we're just going to do it with a gentle bias so that we can benefit from any price movement um, in that direction. And the reason that this strategy would work is because the, the market's going to move this up a bit, it's going to move down, it's going to move up, it's going to meander minutes. like this. Um, and in the time that it meanders, one, two, three, four ticks or whatever, hopefully we can get enough scalps through more than the actual price movement that we've seen itself. So you can see here, a little bit of money has come uh, for the favorite here. Now you could close this position out for a three tick loss here, or you just say, well, I'm pretty confident that the price is going to come back to 6.2 and it will get matched at that particular point uh, within the market. But the thing you shouldn't do is start running around chasing prices left, right and center. You're basically going to wait for that position to get matched. And when that position has been matched, then you start your next trade. You don't want to um, start putting more positions in because then you're, you're racking up more net positions in the market. So I'm going to pop another order in um, at six. And the only reason that I'm doing that is because I just think, um, there you go. And then again, you see the money's come back down. So to close our position at a profit, we need to put it in at 6.2. So as the market meanders like this, then what you'll find is that um, it's very easy to get shaken out of a position. But if your hypothesis is correct and that the market is going to be slightly directionally biased uh, on the upside, then um, there's no reason to particularly fear uh, having an order in the market because your objective is not um, to figure out exactly specifically the direction. We're just sort of saying, well, the market's going to go whoa, 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 and it's going to have a, you know, a tendency to sort of go out. So we'll have a look again at the favorite here. We'll see what the longer term chart looks like. So you can see here, it's been gradually drifting back in a bit, drifting back in a bit, drifting back in a bit, drifting. So if we hold our order in the market there, we'll wait for that position to get filled. I'm not going to be doing anything else. There you go. And then we'll just repeat the process again. Now we did expect it to drift a little bit over time. So I'm going to put a new order in the market and um, cancel the other one because we don't want two of the same. So the pattern of behavior has been drift a bit, come in, drift a bit, come in, drift a bit, come in. So we're leaving our order at 6.2 there in the hope that it does that. So you can see the price has sort of gone up and down a bit. You, you can see from the volume here, 
It's been meandering. But we're working within that meandering range with a slight bias to the upside. How are we inserting that bias into the market? The, the way that we're inserting the bias into the market is we're basically saying we're opening with a lay position first. And the reason we're opening with a lay position first is because we expect at post time this price will be a little bit higher than it currently is. I have to sit here and wait for this order to fill at 6.4. There's really not an awful lot that I can do while we're waiting for that order to fill. I've got my hands off. I'm having a look around, looking at the BBC website, seeing what's on TV. <laughs> now, ideally, we want to see supporting characteristics um, in a market. I'm going to go in at 6.4 here. We'll see if we get that matched. We have, so then the closing order goes at 6.6. .6. The thing I can't control here is um, how much profit we're going to end up with. It's possible that by post time the price could have come back down again here and then we actually end up at a loss. But I'm hoping um, on this occasion that that is not going to be uh, the situation. So all I've got my hands off, got my hands behind my back here. And uh, we're just going to let this play out as it stands at this particular moment in time. Seconds. We've got about 60, 60 seconds, seconds. Uh, to post time. So the only situation that we're going to have here that could create a loss is if it goes off at less um, than 5.7 or 5.7 or lower. Um, if it goes up to 6.6, six, we'll complete another trade. Um, or it could end up somewhere in between the two. And therefore, we end up uh, with a profit of some sort. And that's primarily what we're aiming for. So we're hoping here that this, this is going to go up and get matched. In 30 seconds. In um, 30 at 6 seconds. 6. I'm now looking at the screen to see where the horses are. The horses are beginning to load. So where we've ended up here is a case of do we think in the next 30 seconds to a minute um, that it will reach that price of 6.6 .6 or not? If we don't think that it's going to get anywhere near there, we may as well just take our profit as it is. Uh, but if we do think that it's uh, going to have a chance of getting towards that price point, then we can hold our position in the market. So there are one, two, three. Can't see. The picture's so bad, I can't see how many horses are out. All I can see is that some horses are out. And they're now showing us the odds, which is not particularly helpful. It would be nice if I could see where the horses are. What I'm going to do here is, um, as a precaution, is just do a take SP all, because that will mean if they suddenly race without any warning, um, that position will close. Yep, they're still faffing about behind the stalls. I think maybe one has been loaded. It's very difficult to tell. But can you see we're just holding and holding and holding and holding. And uh, my exit point for this trade will be um, when it looks like they're ready to race. OK, they're bringing the horses forward a bit more feverishly now. So it doesn't, you know, if we're, could we get matched at 6.6 .6 here? Possibly. We just need a little bit more money to get taken there. So I'm going to move that down uh, to sixes. I should get taken in a second. And it looks like they're almost ready to go. So I'm just going to go up here and click the hedge button. There we go. So the profit you see down here is the unhedged amount. The profit you can see up here is the hedged amount. And we can replicate that by sticking that over there. And um, they're about to go. Yeah, they are about this to go. This event is now in but You can play. see that was fairly painless, because all that we were doing is basically saying we didn't think that the price on this was going to come in. Uh, we thought the price was going to be flat or go out slightly, so we just kept on recycling the money through. So you can see, um, in terms of stress levels, that wasn't particularly stressful. Uh, but obviously part of the skill there is just identifying a market where that's more likely. You can see the ones that we avoided based upon their price activity and the ones that we chose, and that came to be a fairly straightforward and simple trade. If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, its tools and the opportunities they present, then why not visit BetAngel.com today and download a free trial.